I'm Sandy Alnock. Thank you for coming back for part two of this adventure in Paisanki. I have, as I said, been going a little bit crazy making a lot of eggs, and I'm going to give you the basics of what I've learned, even though I'm not very good at this yet. One of this two-part series covered how to make an etched egg because white on white lines, it's much easier to hide the fact that my lines are all wonky and not straight. So etched eggs are really beautiful. I also talk about the supplies in that video. So if you want to go see more on blowing eggs, etc., then please go watch that one. I'm going to jump right in with making a 48 triangle design on my egg. So just giving myself guidelines. Put a line that goes all the way up one side of the egg, make a crisscross at the top, and then you can make a crisscross at the bottom as well that will start to join those from one side to the other. And that's going to give you four divisions that should be relatively equal around the egg itself. If you're making a pattern, it's kind of helpful to have something that's relatively evenly spaced. There are people who use quilling strips in order to measure things out and fold the quilling strip into parts so you can make tick marks where your lines should be. That turned out to be more work than I felt like because I was making a lot of eggs and I just wanted to get a lot of practicing done. So I just winged it. Then you take the top half of the egg, each one of those sections, and divide it in half and then draw an X across the tick marks where you've cut it in half so that you end up having X's all the way around. You'll do four of those because you have these four big sections. And you don't have to make triangles in all your designs, which is what I'm going to talk about today, so that you can have all kinds of variety, <clears throat> but start with these lines so you can have a pattern that works across the whole thing. When you have these X's done, you can join those and go all the way up to the end of the egg. And that completes the number 48 because each one of these sections that you're drawing the line through is going to have 12 triangles in it of various sizes and shapes. So the first thing you're going to need to do to get ready to write your design, yes, you write them, you don't draw them apparently in Paisanki. And I cut my wax into little pieces. And the reason is because a lot of other people find it it works to dip the hot kitska into the wax to get wax inside of it. And I found that I ended up blobbing everywhere because I had wax on the outside of it. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. I don't know. But I found that it worked really well to have little pieces cut up so I could put in just the right amount. The first thing you'll want to do is to write the white lines. If you don't want white lines in your design, then dye it first in whatever color you want the lightest to be and then do your first drawing. But I'm going to just stick with having some white lines. And I'm using the middle size of the three Kitskas that came in the kit that I bought. I will put a link to the kit in the doobly-doo down below, but you can watch the other video to see all the things that, are, that come in that kit. You don't need all the, the kit itself. So here is where I have a hexagon shape, basically, made by the star lines that are in that section. And that's where I am going to draw my my big long line from one end to the other. What I found is this 48 triangle design allows me to just go from one section to the other without making one giant line that has to make it all the way around the egg. Because I am inexperienced enough that if I start doing that, it, it just falls apart on me at some point. I run out of wax or I get crooked or something. And what I've tried to do is keep my design to just doing part of it, you know, like two sections at a time is probably the most I can handle to go up the egg and just trying to keep it steady, not start out fast and then go slow or slow and then go fast. Usually I, I have started out really slow and ended up speeding up and then my lines are just never consistent. So I'm just terrible at that portion of it. I'm great at the design portion. So it was helpful to me to just take a step back when I kept ruining eggs and realize, you know, I can do the design portion. I, I could actually, I was trying to figure out if I should make a video on that. I, I've realized I could make a video about the design aspect of it as opposed to 
trying to feel responsible to teach people how to do this portion well, because I am not very good at being consistent. And you'll see when we get to all of my eggs at the end that my eggs are a little messy. And I'm okay with that because I was really having fun doing all this anyway. So everywhere where the, the vertical lines cross the horizontal lines, I made basically what looks like a cross. You could do this portion all together, or you can, you know, do each one one at a time. And I'm going to make a hump on each one of those sections. So I'm still limiting myself to just doing small sections at a time, not trying to draw giant lines or make anything crazy curved or curly cues that are going to get all wonky. I wanted to keep it pretty straightforward and started making flowers basically at each one of these intersections, <clears throat> excuse me, of the horizontal and vertical lines. And that was pretty straightforward and pretty easy to do. I could replicate that four times around the egg. And since I've got four big vertical lines that are in those center hexagon shapes, that seemed like it would work pretty well for a design element to start with on the egg. Now, some people will draw out every element of every egg. And yeah, that would be great. But I messed up so many of them. It felt like I was wasting a lot of time to draw everything out and then write it with the wax. So I decided this was all practice. I was just having a good time. I'm going to give these eggs to friends because they're supposed to be given in love to people that you care about. So I'm just going to give them these eggs anyway, even if they're messy, and I hope people will like them. So there you go. <laughs> and if you are like me and you mess things up, you know, it's okay. It's all right to learn things. So I've turned my petals on the inside now into a tri-petal on this flower so that I end up with three little clumps of, of leaves kind of coming out from the center with an area in between them. Since I had those lines that, that just went parallel to the horizontal and vertical on the egg itself and filled all those in. And so you can see, even though I drew all those triangles, I drew all those guidelines, I did not need to actually draw triangles everywhere on the egg in order to get a beautiful design. So I'm going to plug the drain holes and I'm doing that by getting excess of wax on the outside of the kitska. Remember it blobs. So I'm going to just tap it onto that into the hole and basically touch the bottom of the well into the hole. <laughs> it just fills it right in. And then I'm going to put some vinegar on it. And some people will take a spray bottle and have that handy and spritz it with some, some vinegar, just run it over top. You don't have to do anything major to it, just make sure it gets all good and wet. I'll leave mine in a bowl and just roll all my eggs in it in between each color. And then we're going to dye it. So I've got all of my colors mixed. And in yesterday's video, I give you lots of tips on mixing and how I labeled my jars before I started mixing them because I knew I wouldn't be able to tell visually the difference between them. Some of the colors and some of the eggs, you can peek at them and right away the color is exactly what you want. Sometimes a particular egg just doesn't want to take color and sometimes certain dyes just take a long time. So I found a jar that fits inside of my mason jar. You might find a shot glass or something that would tuck down inside there and hold the egg under the water and then pat it dry. You don't want to wipe it dry and you don't want to use anything wet to dry it. And that's because we're working with water soluble color. And if you use water soluble color, then it will remove some of that. And what I have done is just dabbed it off with a paper towel and then put it inside a tissue and just roll it lightly between my fingers because that gets into all the crevices and gets any of that liquid out and then pat it dry. You'll want it really dry because we're going to write the color for number one next. Anywhere where we want color number one to remain is what we put wax on. And it's kind of a little brain game you play with yourself to say, okay, this area, I want to remain turquoise, so I'm going to cover it with wax. It's the opposite of what you might think, but we're going to cover in this particular section the flowers or the petals or the leaves or whatever they are in the two corners and then up in the top. If you want to add other things, other elements in there, you know, polka dots or something, you could do that at this point, and those will remain turquoise when you do the second dye bath. 
but you need to cover them entirely. And that's one of the areas that I need to learn. I need to have some Ukrainian grandma come and tell me what I'm doing wrong because my wax doesn't consistently turn black like it does in so many other people's videos. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Maybe I'm heating it wrong. I don't have any idea. I'm using the same wax I've seen other people use. So it's not that. I, I don't know. It's also really hard when it's not consistent like this to be able to tell if I've covered all the areas. So basically all of my eggs have a blooper area in them. They just do. And I'm just going to own it because I'm trying as best I can to make sure everything's covered with wax. But I almost always seem to miss a spot or three, whether it's right at the edge of something or sometimes it's just a big spot in the middle all kinds of crazy things. And you won't know that you've missed it until you get to the very end. So here I've got, you can see every other one, the background is colored in and every other one, the leaves are colored in. So I'm gonna dye it in color number two. Remember we have white, we have the turquoise for color number one, and I'm gonna use the black dye for color number two. So this will be a two colors, but it has three in it. So it's got the white if you count that as one. And so here I'm hyper speeding the dipping and peeking at my egg because I wanted that black to be nice and deep and rich and dark. And once again, I'm going to dab it off carefully. Don't get water on it. You don't want to use a baby wipe or anything because that will wipe the color off. If you had more colors to do, you would repeat the process again. But we're all done with that so we can melt off the wax. Before I do that, I'm going to pierce the holes so I don't explode the egg talked about my little surprises in the last video, but I am melting it by holding it near the candle flame. Not really close, like not hyper close because you could burn the egg and you can see the wax just start to slowly melt off. So I melt a section, wipe it off, melt a section, wipe it off. And you can use a heat gun for this and it'll work fine, but I just love the process of watching the design appear. And you don't really get to see it quite that nicely when you're trying to speed through the process with a heat gun, but you can do that. But that was where I ended up exploding some eggs. So make sure you do be careful with that. So there is my finished egg. And you can see every other section is turquoise because I did every other one and I have my, my blooper. That was the area that I, I guess I just didn't fill it in. But now everybody knows that's my egg. I don't even have to sign my eggs. So next you want to protect your eggs. Um, put some shine to them as well. And you want to use something oil-based. Remember, this is water-based color. And I'm going to use some Minwax and just apply it with my fingers through gloves. You could also use some nail polish, clear nail polish. You could use a spray epoxy of some kind if you wish. Lots of different ideas. Just make sure it's oil-based and it makes your egg all beautiful and shiny. I put mine on bamboo skewers. I saw that tip on one of the videos I watched and put it into some floral foam and they can dry overnight because this takes a while to dry. Here's another one that I'm putting the lacquer onto and it's pink instead of the turquoise. So you can change it up just by adding a different color. Next up, we have got more of a fleur-de-lis type of design. Instead of a central petal, I put swirly curly things in there, which I'm very bad at drawing with a Kitska, but they came out really cute. This one I went a little berserk with. I added a third color. So I filled all of the flowers with yellow and then did the same two background things. And I also added those lines. You can basically see that 48 triangle design inside of it, which is not particularly straight. So there's that. <laughs> so I'm going to show you 15 more eggs if you're still hanging together with me that are all based on that 48 triangle design. This one, I didn't use the triangles necessarily, but I used those divisions. So anywhere where there was the hexagon, I put a big flower. And then wherever there was something in between, I put a smaller flower and just alternated those. So you can use those divisions to create any kind of design around the whole egg. This one is a more traditional 48 triangle design. It's literally 48 triangles in the background. And when you look at this, you can see that the shapes delineate where the design elements go. So the, the big hexagon shapes has a dot in the middle of it. And anything that was 
just has the crisscross. It's basically a diamond. Those all got flowers. So it's a way to help you think through a design that goes all the way around the entire egg. Here's another one that uses the 48 triangles, uh, lots of places where I did not actually get my coverage really good, but I made polka dots along all those lines. The second color, I covered up all those lines with strips, and then the third color was adding the color in between each one. So I, I'm not going to explain all of these because I went probably backwards around some of the techniques, but I had fun doing it. So that's what matters, right? Here's one that has less divisions in it. And I just have flowers on two sides and down the side of the egg, I didn't put any major design elements, just a line. This one, I shrunk down those X's. I made them really narrow and you can see there, I didn't use that center band. I just used the X's to make patterns around it and did not do a really great job of coverage. Again, see, I told you I'm not really great at that. But if you look at these from a distance, you look at them in the whole bowl full of all the eggs, they look great, right? This egg was one that I really struggled with. I doubled up the X's. So instead of having every other one have an X, everything had an X. And I was really just practicing my lines going all the way around it. I ended up using a Sharpie to make a little bit of cleanup on the inside. I wasn't intending on having black outlines in there, but that, that tidied it up for me. And this guy used a whole bunch of those diamonds. I made the same kind of doubled up X's and then just started cutting it into different diamond shapes and putting all kinds of crazy things in there, just experimenting and playing. Here's one where you can see the flowers would have been those four flowers going around in the big hexagon shapes. And then the, the strips, those uh, vertical strips, they're actually dots on either side of the yellow line. They're not actually, they look more like checkerboard, but that's not how I made them. And then I just put swirlies in between. That's all. But you can see the dots there if you look carefully. This guy was really fun. I did use the the whole 48 triangle thing. But what I did was make each of the branches. I knew exactly how far to the left and to the right because I was working within those big shapes. And I knew that each of those lines would go to a certain area and it allowed me to repeat it rather than just make random branches. This guy, I used the lines themselves and went over most of them. And then in the last couple of colors, I put in some leaves in between so that I'd have an element that looks like it's behind all of those strips of color. Not sure I like the pink and the red together, but it was an experiment. So there you go. Next up, we have one of my favorites. And this one had two big flowers in two of the hexagons. And then I did a strip down the side with just little floral elements and polka dots. And it was really fun. I used all of the blues and the greens together. I just wanted to see how they'd play together because you can't swatch dyes. This is basically my swatching for myself. So I know what colors I have. So there you go. Here's one that I wanted to make one with a cross because I'm making it for someone in particular that I wanted to have a cross to give to and just played with dots and shapes around those that 48 triangle design. This one was never intended to be a butterfly. I was going to do a big floppy flower with big floppy petals and I did two on either side and they started looking more like butterfly wings than flower petals so I went with it. I did not plan out the interior of the wings very well. That design was just kind of hit or miss. So I'll try that one again sometime. And this was my ode to the wonderful Ukrainian artists who make very complex detailed eggs. I tried to see how much I could put into one. And yeah, I, it was a lot. And it was my little simple lines trying to, trying to be like them. <laughs> and this egg, I'm very sad to report, has not survived. Even though I love this egg, I love how I made the swirls match. I was trying to see if I could make swirls around an egg using the 48 triangle design lines as guides. So I knew the swirl would begin at this point and end at that point and use those basically as a grid. And I bumped the table when the eggs were all drying on their lovely foam racks and 
I'm really glad I got it on video so that at least I still have that and a picture of the egg on my blog. Pictures of all of these are on my blog. You can go see them over there. If you have questions, I can promise you I probably don't have answers because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just having fun. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, click the like button, share it with a friend interested in Paisanki, and I will see you after Easter. Have a lovely, lovely holiday. Bye, everybody.